All right, let's talk about topographic maps. All right. First off, you might hear the word topographic map or contour map. You need to know that topographic maps and contour maps are basically the same thing. Right here on the right, we have an example of a topographic map. It's a top-down uh, view that shows different elevations. This is a three-dimensional view of showing the, the exact same island, um, what it might look like. So around the outside of the island, we have where it borders the sea. Now this is elevation zero, because that's sea level. So you can see here we have elevation zero. The higher we go, 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, would be the different elevations. So let's say it's 125 feet. You can see that it rises up, and it gives us that information. Okay? At point A, everything along this line is at that elevation. So everything on this line right here is at 50 foot of elevation. Now, what is the elevation at point B? Well, that's going to be a little bit more complicated, because at point B, it's in between 75 and 100. So the best that we can say is that the elevation at point B is going to be somewhere between 75 and 100. We can't be exactly sure. We just know that it's between those. But point A, because it's on that line, has an elevation of 50 feet. OK. Here's a more complicated uh, landscape, but basically the same, same thing we have going on. This is a three-dimensional view, and this is the topographic map. Notice on this left side here, it's a gentle slope up. When you get to the top, though, it's a rather steep cliff down. When we look over here and see how the topographic map shows that, you can see that the contour lines are rather far apart in this area right here. So when they're when they are spaced out, space contour lines, that means that it's a, a gentle grade. A gentle grade. However, you can see right in here the contour lines are quite tight together. That represents so close contour lines represent a steep grade. So the closer the lines are together, the steeper it is. The further apart they are, the more gentle the grade. If we go back to this drawing right here, you'll notice that each line in this case represents 25 feet, 25 to 50, 50 to 75. We call that the contour interval. Okay, The contour interval is the difference in elevation between each of the contour lines. So, so contour interval is the difference in elevation between two contour lines. It's often listed on the very bottom uh, of a map, but you may be asked to figure that out on your own. Okay. This may seem like an obvious question, but how does water flow? Obviously, we're going to say that water flows down. It flows downhill. Seems very obvious, but I've seen many students get questions about this wrong. If I show you this topographic map right here, we have a river. You can see the river is, is moving along. Uh, we have uh, 300, 200, 100. And I asked you, what direction would the river go? If you were thinking, you might say, ah, I see the ocean. Clearly, this river flows towards the ocean. But you might be given uh, a map where you can't see the ocean. If that's the case, what we need to do is we need to look at the different elevations. Our contour interval here is 20 meters. So this is 100. Here's 200. So this is 100. This is 120. This is 140. This is 160. 180. This would be 80, 60, 40, 20. If this river is going from 140 to 120 to 100 to 80, since water flows downhill, we know that it's going this direction. One of the other things that we can see on this map around this river is we notice that there's a V shape to the way the contour lines move. This is due to erosion. Erosion is constantly taking bits of the, uh, the stream bed and, and eroding it out to the ocean. This is a great clue whenever we see these that there is a river here. Even if we don't see, um, the river's not drawn. You need to know that the V, 
points towards the source of the water. It points to the water source. Where is it coming from? If we go back here and look at this example right here, we can see that there is a river that comes down here. What is the source of the river? Up here on the top. But you can see that V shape right there. There's another V shape right there. That's indicating that there's a river. There's another river right here. You can tell that that comes from right around here. Here's another example where we're able to see the V shape right here, right here. So if I were to ask you what direction is this river moving, you would notice 6200 up here, 5400. So clearly this is a higher elevation. This is a lower elevation down here. You also notice that this V is pointing towards the source of the river. So what direction is this river going? This river is going this way. One of the other questions that they like to ask you about topographic maps is if you were to walk from point A to point B, what would that be like? What would the experience be like? Would you be walking uphill, downhill? And they sometimes will ask you to compare it to a side view. So if we started here at point A, which would be around 10, you would walk quite a ways before you reach 20 feet, which means it was not a very steep uh, grade. Then a little bit more to 30, 40, so you're going up, up, up. You can see in this map down here, you're going up, up, up. You cross the peak and then begin to descend, 40, 30. You don't ever get quite back to 20. One of the things that you can do on your own paper, if you were ever given a project like this, is to use the lined paper and label them 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and draw your own side view. And that will often help you to get to a good answer. Okay, let's try one of these problems together. If you want, you can pause the video and give it a try, and then come back and see how you did. What I'm going to ask you is to draw a side view of what it would look like if you walked from point A to point B. All right, the best way to do this is let's look down at point A. You start off at about 50. So you're starting off around right here. You don't go very far before you get to 60, 70. If you're ever on a test and you don't have this graph paper right below it, use lined paper. Um, or doing it for homework. Make your own line paper. 80. Also 80. Down here it reaches about 70. Here it's 60. Here it's 60. And then we can see that they're starting to get close together again. 70. 80. 90. 100, 100 again, back down to 90, to 80, to 70, and it finishes out here at 60. Now, if we were to connect these dots, it might look something like this. Now, we get up here, what's going to happen in between these two 80s? We can guess that it didn't just stay flat that it came over the top. It didn't quite get to 90 because otherwise we would have another contour line. Comes down here. Now, when it got down here, it didn't stay at 60, otherwise it would have been on the contour line, so it must have dipped below. We know how, we don't know how far it dipped, but we know it didn't get to 50. Comes back up. And then comes back down. So that would give us an idea of what that terrain looked like. All right, let's finish up with some of the key points about topographic maps or contour maps. First is that elevation of sea level is zero meters. Sea level is zero. If we said 100 feet below sea level or 100 meters above sea level, at sea level would, of course, be zero. All points on a contour line are at the same elevation. So we saw before lots of topographic maps. Everything on this line is at 60. 
The closer the contour lines get to one another, the steeper the slope. The further apart they get, the more gradual the slope. Contour maps can not normally cross. So you're never going to uh, see this is 100 feet, this is 200 feet. That wouldn't make any sense. There'd be no instance that a point could be at both 100 and 200 feet. Now you may be saying, well, what if there's an overhang, kind of like in uh, The Lion King or all the Roadrunner cartoons? Those would be drawn a little differently. If you had an overhang, it would be drawn with a dotted line to show you that it was different. Okay, so they normally don't cross. In any example that you're going to be given in my class, they wouldn't be crossing. And finally, water flows downhill. It seems like an obvious thing that we all know, but remember, uh, when asked what direction a river flows, you need to remember that it flows downhill and that the V points towards the source. V points towards the source of the river. Okay, if you understand this, you should be set for any test questions about topographic maps.